Anya here and I'm back with another video for Ophelia Talks. And today we are making this lovely little gem of a shawl. It is such a lovely shawl to take with you. You can wear it in three ways and it is so easy to make. I wear it as a shoulder shrug, a large infinity shawl or also wrapped around my neck for extra warmth. If you wear this under your coat, it is not bulky, but it does provide you with lots of warmth. So, let's get started on making it. So, what do you need for this shawl? Well, I used two balls of Empire and you cannot tell from the video here that this is the actual Empire colour. I am seeing it as Empire, my viewfinder is not catching it properly. So I do hope that you have seen the colour in the lookbook that I did for this little shawl. The Empire colour is such a lovely, lovely, special colour. So I do hope you will have a look at it and see <laughs> what the proper colour is. I'm sorry, it's just not not reproducing well in my viewfinder. So you'll need two balls. I am using a four and a half hook. So Starcraft Special DK is prescribed for a four hook. So that goes up half a size from what is prescribed, but I usually go down to three and a half. So I am using a hook size, that's a full hook size up from what I usually use. So just, you know, see what you usually use and go a full hook size up. So that means a whole one, not half a one. And see what your shawl feels like because I want it to be nice and soft and loose and lacy, but not too much, okay? So that's why four and a half. I would also recommend having some stitch markers, darning needle, scissors, of course, and I have my tape measure here just so you can measure how wide yours is and how long, because after a while, of course, yours will be long enough to attach together. And that's how we are going to turn it, of course, into the Mobius shape. So let's get started. We are going to make our slip knot, whichever way you usually make it. Insert your hook and we're going to chain 65. So let's start chaining one, two, three, four, five and so on. Now, before I do anything else, I want to say leave this end hanging on your shawl until the very end because you will need this later on okay so start with chaining 65 so i now have 65 chains and we are going to work our way back along the chain and straight away we are going to be into doing our repeat of our stitches so this is the 65th chain and i am going to place a stitch marker in there just so that I don't lose sight of it. So now for turning we are going to be doing three chains. Three chains is the amount of chains we are going to be using for our turning chain in this project and um, the chains count as a stitch. So this basically is our first treble of our row. Now we are going to have to add two trebles to this, but they are together. So we are going to be doing a treble by yarning over twice. But the two together trebles that we need to do are over the next two stitches. So not the one with the stitch marker in, but the one next to it for the first treble. There we go. We're not finishing it. Then yarn over again, start the next one into the next chain. There we are. So we now have three loops on our hook. Then you yarn over and you finish the three trebles in one go. So we have started the row with three trebles together. 
these of course are made up of our turning chain of three chains and then two trebles so we are going to be starting and finishing each row with three trebles together now we do a chain then we skip a chain then we are going to do a treble in the next stitch so you yarn over twice insert into that next stitch pull up a loop yarn over pull through two yarn over pull through two and yarn over pull through two chain one skip a stitch into the next stitch you do another treble there we go chain one skip one and then into the next stitch we are going to do five trebles so you yarn over you skip a stitch and then into that next one you are going to do five treble crochets four and five there we go then chain one you skip one so make sure you do in fact skip the next one this one will be enlarged because of course you've got five stitches coming out of that so skip this one into the next one yarn over insert pull up a loop and do your treble crochet so then you chain one you skip one and you do another treble crochet into the next stitch chain one and now that you've done your two trebles on their own now we are going to do an upside down shell so this is what i call a shell and then here we are going to skip one into the next one we are going to do five trebles together so you are going to get started by doing your trebles over the next five stitches so you skip one into the next stitch you are going to then start doing five treble crochets in a row but you don't finish them properly so you only do those pull throughs twice instead of three times so each time you keep a loop on your hook so that's four and then on to the next chain to place my fifth treble so you now have one two three four five six loops on your hook you yarn over and you pull through the six loops on your hook then you chain one skip one no not this one because this one is used this one so you skip that one into the next one you do your next treble chain one skip one into the next one for a treble chain one skip one and then here you will be doing your shell again the shell of five trebles And make sure you can get into it <laughs> so we are always doing trebles and chains in this pattern and as you can see look we've gone from a chain that's sort of straight we have now created a little zigzag there so this is how you are going to be continuing along your chain. So this is how you are going to be continuing. You chain one, skip one, treble in the next one. Chain one, skip one, treble in the next one. Chain one, skip one. And then you do either your five treble crochets together or your five treble crochets in one stitch as a shell. So you just need to work out which one it is that you have to do. 
And of course, the first line is the hardest because you have no previous row to fall back on. So if you concentrate really well and you make sure that you do the first row properly, then you'll have it much easier in the next rows. So there is a diagram in the pattern for this shawl which will help you as well. So skip one, treble in the next one. So I'm just going to go and finish my first row here and I will be back because of course from the second row it will be the same but also different. <laughs> so I'll be back. So after your last treble shell, you're going to chain one, then skip one, and of course your treble in the next one. Chain one, skip one, treble in the next one. Chain one, and then you're going to skip one, and then you should have three stitches left. And indeed, I have three stitches left, and in here, you're going to do three trebles together because this is the location where we would have done a five treble together but of course it's the end of our row so we are just going to end it in three trebles okay so there we are so there's my three trebles and i finish them together so this is your first row let me just squash it up a bit so it fits in the viewfinder as you can see we've got one two three four shells one two three upside down shells and then we have of course our two little lots of three trebles together at the end so this is a repeat of 16 stitches and you count the repeat from sort of the middle of a shell to the middle of that shell there. So if you want to make this wider, you would have to add 16 stitches. So the multiple for this shawl is 16 plus one at the end, because of course we do an extra stitch for having these three treble crochets together on the end. Okay, so let's start on our next row. And really, this is the row that you're going to keep on repeating for the rest of the shawl. So for now, the width of my shawl is just about 40 centimeters or 16 inches. So let me now show you how to do the next row and then that is the row that you will keep repeating throughout this shawl until it's about 105 centimeters long or 42 inches. So to get started you're going to do a turning chain of three chains one two and three. This counts as a treble and in this case this counts as a half finished treble because we are going to be turning and doing our three trebles together. But of course we need to find the locations where we are going to place these trebles. And just like we did to get started, we are just going to place them in the next few stitches because the chain is coming out of our first stitch here, so that's fine. Then the first treble that we are doing is going to go around the chain space because that is that chain that we are going to be using. Remember, don't finish it. And then the last treble that we are going to be placing is going to go on top of the treble. So you go into the V of the treble below and you do it half finished and then you yarn over and you finish the three loops on your hook. So this will be a straight edge for our shawl and we started it with three trebles together as this chain three counts as a treble. Then we do our repeat of chain one, skip one, treble in the next stitch and that just happens to be that treble underneath. Chain one, skip one and then the treble is placed on the first treble of the shell. 
There we go. And we chain one. So we are doing exactly the same repeat as we did before in this first row here. But of course, the locations where we're placing them might seem a little bit weird or funny. But this is where they're going to be all throughout the shawl. Then we've chained, so we skip one. And then in the next one, we are going to do the same thing as we see here, a shell of five trebles. So the location for the shell is going to be in the middle of the shell below. And of course, the locations for the stitches as we are placing them now from this row is of course going to be the same throughout. So once you know these locations, it's going to be really easy for you to make this shawl. So we've done the five, chain one, off to do those two treble crochets with the chains in between. And of course we are skipping one here and the treble goes on to the last treble of that shell below. Chain one, skip one, and yeah, the location is on top of the treble. Chain one, skip one. And then here we have to start our upside down shell. So the five trebles together. And of course, if we skip this one here, we start on the treble. So go in that one. This always was really big for me, but that is the location where you have to be. So just go in there, do your first treble. Then we know there's a chain here, so go around the chain space. Then we have as the middle for this shell here, on top of the upside down shell. Then next to it, in around the chain space. And then of course the last treble, which is going to be located on top of that treble there. And those are your locations for your upside down shell or your five trebles together. Then you yarn over and you finish your shell. Chain one, skip one, treble in the next one. Chain one, skip one and off we go again. So we are back to placing our treble on top of that first one from the shell and then we know that now here we are going to have to be placing the five trebles for making that shell of course after doing that chain one so like i said once you know where you have to place everything if you somehow don't place it there you will soon find out that you've done something wrong uh, that you've missed a stitch somewhere so yeah it's it it's difficult to explain but the pattern almost tells you if you've done something wrong of course you'll be in the next row <laughs> but it'll only be one row to redo if you do do something wrong see now i knew here i had to do those five trebles together over all those stitches so now i'm finishing them all off there we go chain one and off i go again and this is how you are going to be continuing all along your rows and continue doing your rows until you have a length of shawl that will just about go round your shoulders. And of course here, after you've done your two trebles, we have to do those three trebles together at the end of our row. And the locations for that are above the last treble as you can see the last treble on its own then a treble around the chain space and then of course here it looks a bit funny but this is a three treble together so there's only one v on top of that so check look there it is 
that's the V that you need to pick up to put that last treble in. And then, of course, you finish them together. There we go. See? And same thing again then. You do a chain three, you turn, and you repeat what I've just done in the previous row. And like I said, once you know the locations, it is a really enjoyable shawl to make because you just know what you are doing. So good luck, and I will see you when I have the length that I need. So I am just finishing my last row and I have decided that this is the length that I want. So my shawl is now 40 centimeters wide and it is a length of 105 centimeters. In inches, that's 16 inches by 42 inches. So I have now finished my last row and now i'm going to do one more row where we are going to turn this shawl into the mobius shape or turn it into a tube so lay out your shawl in front of you just straight like this and then you put a twist in it like this so you have this in your shawl and then you bring where you started towards where you just finished there we go so you are starting to attach your shawl where your end is where you started with your chain okay so then you go back to where you finished here you do your turning chain one two and three then you kind of turn, so you make sure you're, you're holding your shawl the way you are normally for crocheting. And then you are going to be looking at your starting chain here. So every time you go and do a stitch on this side, you're going to loop it into this starting chain. Okay, or in between or wherever you can possibly get into you know whichever location is feasible so now here I have to do my usual so doing your two more trebles to make that three treble together so you do your three treble together then you go over to your starting chain and I just, yeah, I try and go into that third loop there from my starting chain and I just do a slip stitch, just looping it through. And of course, it's a little bit fiddly. Make sure everything is nice and tight. So I'm through the chain and now I'm just through the loop on my hook. There we go. And so we have attached. So now you have to do a chain. But instead of doing a chain, I'm just going to slip stitch into the next stitch here. So into that next chain, that leftover strand, and I do my slip stitch or my chain like that. So I've done my chain, now back to doing my treble. So skipping one, treble onto treble, doing your treble. I finish the treble, I go up to my next little leftover strand there and I do my little chain. This might seem a little bit fiddly but it's really worth doing it like this because it's going to be invisible, just invisible. Right okay so now we have this chain so you just go into it as best you can, there we go, and you do your slip stitch here instead of your little chain that you're supposed to be doing and then off to doing of course here another treble because that's where we are don't get caught into <laughs> all the rest that's where we are in the pattern so here you need to skip this one treble on to the first treble of that shell there once again go back up to your chain into that next chain and you just do your 
little slip stitch and this is how you're going to continue of course so we do another chain here so we'll do a little slip stitch attaching and then of course here you're going to do your chain five so let's do that we finish each stitch so as we finish the stitch we have to attach it so once again into the next chain where we are supposed to be doing our slip stitch and again so you place your trebles for your shell in the usual location and each time here you're going to be putting them where see i'm picking up two strands that's fine you know what whatever you can pick up that seems to make sense for attaching it to the other side is fine so there we go. So now, of course, we're in that middle treble and I've got here that little chain here, which is enlarged because, of course, it has five trebles coming out. So I'm using that to connect with my little slip stitch. There we go. So then you find a little chain right next to the middle one. Yeah, if you can't get in it, try. But if not, just go around that chain. See, I got into it, but going around the chain would work as well okay so I've done my four another one here and once again you are using those familiar locations so just go with the flow here okay so that's how you connect those stitches now of course we're doing these and then here we have the five together. I will meet you here to show you how to connect those. So I've just done my slip stitch here instead of my chain. I'm skipping the chain here. And now I am ready to start working my five trebles together. So I'm going to do that. So I'm just going to go and do what we have been doing throughout this shawl. Do my five half finished trebles and of course it's only after we finish a stitch that we are going to go and connect it at the other side so these are my five trebles I'm going to finish them together and now I go to the other side and indeed I am here in that next chain here that is where I'm going to just like before go in there pick it up and do a slip stitch bring it through and bring it through there we go and I mean no not a chain you're going to go straight into the next chain there to make your slip stitch skip and you do your treble here and this way it's a really neat and clean way to um, you know attach your yeah I missed that one uh, this way it's a really neat and clean way to attach your shawl together you're going to not see this at all nearly um, I had to look for it when I you know when I sort of tried it out and undid it because of course I had to film it um, and if you place your twist on it of course then nobody's going to see it because it's inside the twist so yes this will take a little bit longer but like I said it's worth doing this one because it is such a lovely nice way of attaching your shawl together I'll see you at the end of the row this is what your join looks like just doing my last three treble together here there we go at the end and then of course here into that last stitch here 
for a little slip stitch to attach. There we go. So that is the end of that. So cut off your yarn. <laughs> there we go. So now sewing the ends, of course, but also now go and find your twist and just bring it. I mean, I can only see where my end is because I've got my end still hanging out. So bring the twist where your, you know, where your ends are. And then that way it completely disappears into your design. There we go. Oh, there it is. Look. So there we go. So a lovely little shawl, which is easy to wear. And I hope you will enjoy making it. very much for watching and I will see you in the next video. Bye!